16th November 2008, receiving presidential accent on 6th January 2009, with one objective, to promote the development of railways and rail services, hold, administer and improve railway assets, promote the development and management of suburban railway, among other things. Railway development appears to be taking a bit of a slow pace in Ghana recently. At the table this morning, we have the chief executive of the Ghana Railway Development Authority, Mr. Yao Owusu, to help us understand what the challenges may be and what the plan for the bigger picture would be. Mr. Owusu, thank you for making time to sit with us thank today. Thank you for having me. Yes. As a, a young girl who grew up in Accra, I remember we had two trains. The one that was going through Circle and the one that was going to Tema. Mm -hmm. Now we have one train. Yes. The one that is going to Tema. Is that still the case? Yes, the one going, the passenger train going from Accra to Tema. Why? Okay, so obviously I would like to give you a little background about the railway sector. Um, back in the colonial days, we had approximately 1,000 kilometers of railway lines stretching from the major commercial centers of Kumasi, Accra and Takrade, and connecting to the two major ports. And most of these lines were single track, uh, narrow gauge. The narrow gauge means that the narrow gauge, the feature of a narrow gauge is the distance between the rails. It's a much narrow gauge, which is like one meter in between the rails. Now, um, since the colonial times, obviously because of um, neglect and underfunding, most of our lines are completely non-functional. At the moment, we only have a couple of lines, as you mentioned, Tema to Accra is one of them. We also have on the western line the freight cargo transport from the Takwa port to Unsuta Manganese Mines. We also have we also have the Takwadi to second day through Kojokro passenger train services, which is currently not running because of COVID nineteen. So that is where COVID nineteen was in twenty twenty. Yes. It's twenty twenty three. Sure. So if it's because of COVID, the trains were not running. Well, so it's when when the, when the lines were stopped after the, during the COVID time, there were some operational issues, and since then the lines have not been running. What what's the issue? Is it being resolved? Part of it is because of they are working on the issues as we speak. Yes. What were the issues? Some of them may be cost, operational cost, maybe. and some issues. Yes, please. Maybe, but yeah. are, are they? Is it the cost issue? That was one of the main issues in terms of they were not really being patronized mm -hmm. as much as the we trains expected. were not being patronized. patronized exactly because of the location. Because typically people like to take the train from Kojokrom all the way to the center of the heart of Takrade. And that was a challenge. And so people would rather take a trotro from Kodokrom um, Street. Why was this a challenge? Are there rail lines from the Kodokrom to the heart of Takrade? There are no rail lines from Kodokrom to Takrade. That, that's a missing link. No, we don't have it at the moment. Right. So anyway, so we, we do have future plans to re-establish it, to make the lands run again. So that is what we are working on. Accra to Nsawam. Accra to Nsawam too is not functioning because it was functioning couple of about a year or two ago. It wasn't. I've lived in that part of town for almost 10 years. Okay. So and it worked at the beginning part of those 10 years, perhaps, but not in the last okay. three or four So we, we tried to rehabilitate the line so that for safety reasons, we had to close the line and we establish it with a new standard gauge line. That is what is happening. And how is that going? Well, we do have investors. We do have, we've signed some contracts with some potential investors to do it from Accra to Nsawam and in the, in the final stages of the approval. So it will happen very soon. So, so for now, nothing? For now, nothing. And once we don't have up to Insawam, then Insawam to Kumasi becomes even more delayed. Sure. So the plan is to develop the entire eastern line from Accra to Insawam to Bosusu to Kumasi. And we're looking for potential investors to ensure that this will happen. But given the global economic situation, that is where the struggle is. But it, we have, we have, we've done the feasibility studies. We've done the front-end engineering design. So it will be coming on. As in, part in the of fixing term. the Accra and Sawan problem, you have to fix the Kantamanto problem. In terms of? In terms of encroachment on the space and the sheer volumes of traders, because the trains have been off for a long time. These days, there are parts of the train line that you can't even see unless you are standing right on top of it, because the traders are just everywhere yes, along the tracks. That is true. Yes, there has been a lot of encroachment all along Kantamanto and any other, a lot of uh, railway corridors throughout the country. Now, with respect to Kantamatu, and the, um, the proximity of the Kantamatu market vis-a-vis -vis the Accra main railway station, we do have a plan in place. We've had approval from the AMA, Accra Metropolitan Authority, and the town and country planning to re 
to re-establish the entire area to create commercial centers. Which means what? Re-establish? It's, it's part of the entire program to redevelop the Eastern Line. In other words, we are going to we are putting a scheme in place whereby we are going to create commercial centers. I mean, people may have to be relocated as we speak. Okay, but may? yes, because when, it when sounds like they will it, have it depends. To they have to relocate. Depends on where they are. If they are in the railway corridor, at the moment we have told our leases not to develop permanent structures for the you purpose. You are leasing. We, the, have, we the, do have some places that we do lease. Yes. Up to what perimeter? Um, the railway. The right of way is about. Um, 30 meters from the center of the line to 30 meters from the center of the line to the right and to the left. So we do have some locations, railway properties that are being leased to some leases. But we've informed, we've informed, some lands have been leased, but we have informed them not to build permanent stretches. Are they abiding the by those in, in information? Are they sticking there, to There has been the some rules? few. We have, they, we have observed some few permanent structures that have been built along that corridor, which potentially could be demolished when we start the development plan. Yes. When is the development plan started? It sounds like we've been planning for a long time. I remember that when I started my journalism career at GBC, this is some uh, many years ago, in the, in the latter part of maybe closer to 2010, mm -hmm. I attended a, a Meet the Press series, which the, minister, the Ministry of Rail mm -hmm. addressed. Mm -hmm. And there was an elaborate 15-year plan, which was supposed to have got us way beyond where we are now mm -hmm. so it seems like the planning has been going on for a while when is it being visualized when are we going to see what okay so has currently, taken us years currently we are talking to potential investors we are still in talks we, exactly we've been attracting them we do have they've done some we are doing some feasibility studies in terms of economic viability obviously investors who have in mind their returns and so forth so we are talking to potential investors the plan is in place it has been approved by um, a crime metropolitan authority like i said and also time and country planning authority has approved a plan it's a question of getting the right investors to come in to develop the area tell us what their plan is say it again what's their plan well the plan the plan is as i said in the scheme of things is to make the entire area as part of the broader redevelopment of the eastern line to ensure that we have commercial centers bear in mind that we do have an existing structures at the police station the fire station some established market so we're going to build around that area to ensure that that will be part of the broader redevelopment of the eastern railway line mm. so when it comes to Ghana's rail network how many kilometers are we looking at you've given us a 1000 kilometer rail line around the, the, the colonial days yes. what's the situation now okay the situation now is that recently we developed a railway master plan Okay, and the main policy framework that informed the development of the rail master plan is a national transport policy. And the strategy is to ensure that we can extend the railway line to all regions of the country, especially touching the 16 capital regions. That is the plan now. And the total plan that we have is about 4,000 kilometers of railway network throughout the country. So and that from 1,000, we've grown to 4,000 kilometers. Now, the 1,000 was the existing railway corridor. So that was since from, colonial days, we've added 3,000 No, we have not added. What it is is that the, the 1,000 was from Accra to Kumasi, Accra, Kumasi to Takrade, and then um, central line from Ajinko to Kutu Huneval. Those were the existing line. And those lines were, pe were built purposely for, to basically were the main route for the transportation of bulk. So they were cargo trains, They were cargo trains, basically. To, to take care of our timbers and our cocoa and the bauxite and um, you know, petroleum products and cement. So that was, if you look at the Ghana map, it's somewhere in the middle. It forms like an alphabet A, yeah. from Kumasi, which is a focal point, to Takradi port, and then from Kumasi to, to um, Tema, I mean to Accra, and of course with a branch line to Tema, and then the central line from Ajinkotoku to, um, to Hunibal. So they were so we exactly. they were, they, 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 we also had the passenger services. Remember in those days people could still take they were not just for passenger they were not just for cargo. From Kumasi to Takradi, yes, it was meant for the cargoes of the the cement and the commodities that I've mentioned, but it was also a commuter train from Kumasi to Takradi and also from Kumasi to Accra. I remember those days when we were all going to school. We even have the sleeper services. You know, whereby people can take the train from Kumasi to Accra and, today, and get there in the morning. And yet today? And today we don't have it. Obviously because of lack of 
redevelopment or lack of funds and neglect over the years. The people who work at the at the railway are, are they still at post? Are they, are they still em employed under the government? Okay. Organ? So under the railway, okay. First of all, I have to say this that um, as you may well know, okay, during after the elections of 20, 20, 2016, His Excellency the President Anadu Danko Akufuado established the railway ministry. It was span of the transport ministry. So under the railway ministry, under the able leadership of Honorable John Peter Mau, we have two agencies, the Ghana Railway Company Limited, who, who, who are the operators, and then we have the Ghana Railway Development Authority, which I'm the CEO, which are the developers, and also um, you know, granting licenses to ensure that the lines will be developed. All right. But yes, so those workers at the Ghana Railway, is that, uh, my guess is you're asking about the Ghana Railway Company Limited, mm -hmm. the workers, they are still at post. So these would include people who drive trains, people the who train drivers, man the, the different stops the are there. The maintenance they are all still crew, at the maintenance post. They are all still being paid. No, of course, because of natural attrition, I wouldn't mm -hmm. say all of them are still there, but yes, there has been some movements. Yeah, they are being paid. But the, rings are, the, the trains are not on the tracks. The trains are not and running it's, fully. It's, it's the development authority that's yes. supposed to put the trains on the tracks for the company to run, to yes. operate. Yes. And that hasn't happened according to plan. What has been the most significant challenge to executing our plans? We've talked about there being a plan for a long time, but what, are, what have been some okay. of the hindrances sure. so for to example, realizing the dream? So, for example, currently we have three major projects ongoing. Mm -hmm. All right. We have on the western line, we have from Takwadu Port to Huni Valley. It's about 78 kilometers. And the contractor on the project is a Mandi investment of Cyprus. Right? The facilities were obtained from Deutsche Bank. And then we also have the Tema Tumpakadan on the eastern line or eastern expansion. That is also ongoing. The contractors are Afghans infrastructure of India. And then we also have um, a contractor in Kumasi who is developing Kumasi from Adum to Kasi. That one is being undertaken by David Walter, an indigenous Ghanaian company. So those are the three major those are the three major projects that are currently ongoing. What's the estimated time of completion okay. for these? So for the Tamampaka dam, it's about ninety eight percent done, and the estimated time of completion will be March of twenty twenty four. Now the Takradi Port to Huni Valley sessions of the Takradi Port to Huni Valley have already been completed, but we need to link the entire thing, which is about seventy eight kilometers. That is expected to be completed by twenty twenty six, because it's a forty two month project, and the and the target here is to be able to get to the Nsuta mines, to be able to optimize the haulage of the manganese mines from the Nsuta mines to Takwadu port. And of course, the Kumasi project is a double line. One is part of the main line from Kumasi to Takwadu. When you say double line, what do you mean? Double track. Double track. You know, some trace in the colonial days... So it's like the, the road. It's like the, the, the vehicle road. Yes. We so have, we, we find a train heading in one direction, another heading going in the, in the, in the yes, other direction. Yes. Okay. But if you have the proper control, uh, telecommunication control system, you only need one single line. Because we have passing loops. But when I say tra double track, one is dedicated to commuter line, commuter passengers, and the other one is part of the main line from Kumasi all the way to Takrade. Um, I, I want to hear more because uh -huh. it, it sounds like there okay. is a lot of work to be done. Yes. And yet we are seeing uh -huh. things move at a very slow pace. pace. So what's the plan for the, the coaches, for example? When you talk about these, this master plan, you say you are in talk with investors. What kind of investments are you looking for? And will we see a different kind of train, speed trains, sky trains? Uh -huh. Is a sky train uh -huh. still okay. on the table? So to put things in perspective, for example, in the colonial days, the average speed was 50 kilometers per hour. Currently, based upon our master plan, the average speed for the new standard gauge will be 120 kilometers per hour, which is much faster. Now, when you talk about speed train, it depends on what you mean by speed. You know, and even though the tracks are designed for 160 kilometers per hour, the maximum speed will be 120 kilometers per hour for the existing lines that we are developing. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, the sky of, and the sky train, the sky train is still under under feasibility studies, right? Uh, we are still looking at the feasibility studies, and at the right moment, the government will roll it out. I wouldn't promise when the sky train will be coming. It is very capital intensive. The sky train, the price to build a sky train for one kilometer is about four times the normal track 
railway track that you will build. So it's quite expensive. Mm. It depends and on the depends on the length of the route that you intend to build. Mm -hmm. What's the plan for the coaches? Because the, the train that I am more used to seeing every day is not the, the red, gold, green one that, mm -hmm. that goes to Tema. And, and shout out to all the people in Tema. It's the Insanwam one, mm -hmm. which is on the, the route that I'm used to. And it's the old darling that okay. I, I, I prefer to call it. What kind of coaches are we looking at? Can okay, the coaches that we are looking at is called DMU, which is Diesel Multiple Units. And they have coaches, they have passenger coaches with all the state-of-the-art amenities, you know, to ensure that passengers, and they are first-class, second-class um, coaches that will be coming. And now, in terms of the freight, we also are going to be buying wagons with, with high-speed locomotives to be able to convey the cargoes to the various points in the country. And so I ask, in all this, when do we begin to see inaugurations commissions okay when so the tamam the tamam line the tamam line will be commissioned by the march 2024 and that's in 97 kilometers from tamam port all the way to pakadan and the strategy was to convey goods from we have built two railheads a railhead for a layman is um the beginning and the terminating point of the rail, of the railway line so we have a railhead at tamam port basically to facilitate the integration with the terminal so that we can be able to carry containers onto the railway line and then we we'll take them to Mpakadan, which has another railhead and then onward transportation over the lake to Bupe, where there will be another port and then to shorten the distance so that they can also transport it from Bupe to the northern part and also to the neighboring countries like Burkina Faso, Niger and Mali. You're looking for investment. Yes. I, you mentioned the Ghanaian company that's involved in the Kumasi Edum to Kase yes. rail line. So as the conversations are ongoing, what kind of partnerships are you looking for? There may be people who are watching who may be able to offer some of those, All right. so those things that you're looking for. Typically, the Kumasi to Kase line is being financed by the government of Ghana. The Tema to Mpakadan line, as I said, is being financed by Indian Action Bank through a credit facility alone. Likewise, the Takwadi port to Huni Valley is being financed by credit facility from Deutsche Bank. So it's a loan as well, all right? The challenge is that, I mean, there are several ways to finance these high capital intensive projects. You can go by an outright debt or credit facility, or you can do what they call BOT, build, operate, and transfer. Or you can go in by whereby the government can finance itself. Now the challenge with the BOT is the fact that, as you know, railway is a long-term investment, and typically, the rate or the tariffs may not be able to support a short-term returns for the investor. So therefore, it may not be attractive. And typically, under the PPP scheme or the private partnership scheme, what the investors will be looking for is for the government to guarantee them the gaps, what they call sovereign guarantee. And sovereign guarantee also is a, is a form of debt which goes onto our balance sheet. There's plenty of money out there. People are willing to loan money to us. But the question is, do we have the capacity to borrow more money to build the railway lines. Now, what the Israelis have done, to give an example, in the, the Israeli model was that they finance it in-house, their own internally generated fund, but they had to forego certain infrastructure. So we as a country, we have to make a commitment. The, the vision of the president, really, is to modernize the railway system, to revamp the railway system, to make room for industrialization. No country can industrialize without a railway system. But we, as a country, have to make a commitment whether or not we would like to really have a railway system that is operating within the shortest possible time, which means we have to forego certain things. So you can't have it to all. leverage some of our resources. To leverage some of to, our resources. To get railway lines. Yes. As an authority, are you able to raise funds? No. To 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 no. see to some of these. No, projects? we as an authority are not able to raise funds. We are not a um, limited liability company. So basically we rely on investors and the Ghana government to come in to basically fund the projects. And so that comes, it's a waiting game. It's not a, it's a people are still, we are still looking at different options in terms like of the what? investment. Like I said, the BOT, mm -hmm. you know, which is not very attractive, even though some people have made some stripes that they would like to come in. As long as people are willing to invest for the long term. What's the future that is it's working. running now? So yeah. the rest of the kilometers. Well, and that is a narrow gauge. Even the one that is running now, I try to tell me it's a narrow gauge, which we are going to redevelop into a standard gauge. Standard gauge is a, is a wider gauge. It gives you the um, 
the ability to be able to have a faster faster train and also to be able to carry more load right so everybody is moving away most globally people are moving away from narrow gauge system to the standard gauge system the standard gauge system is about half a meter wider than the narrow gauge system i know that is people are who are you know several decades older than me who have ridden on trains in ghana more than i have yes. and this is 2023 and i know so many people who have never uh -huh. they're Ghanaians. they've never been on a train yes. unless they travel out of ghana yes what's the You've, you've talked to us about the master plan, but what's the commitment and assurance to turning that around sooner rather than later? And perhaps you will make your final comments before you Sure. The commitment is, as I mentioned, you know, we as a country have to make the commitment that we want our railway system to be developed in the shortest possible time. And that requires a huge amount of investment. All right. So not until we get to, of course, we have, com we have competing infrastructures to build. We have to build hospitals, we have to build schools, we have to build our roads. So it's, it's choose and pick. So we, as a country, have to make the commitment that this is what you want to do and attract the best investors and also even to generate our own funds to be able to construct these lines. So you feel like the child that has um, parents looking after a sibling who is not well. And mm. so increasingly the funds are going towards the, the sick sibling and not the one who appears to be healthy even though you're not healthy yourself yeah it's almost like a zero-sum game okay i mean you only have one big pie slice of pie that you have to share so one person gains another person doesn't that's what i'm saying that we have to make a price the israelis did that what they, they focus on railway system maybe they put away some of the other infrastructures and put all their resources in building the railway system and it's done and I think that is what Ghana needs to do, if you're really serious about this. I mean, this 4,000 kilometers, if you go at this pace, like you said, no, it will take us forever. But if the country makes a commitment that we want a robust railway system, it can be done. But you may have to forego other infrastructures. Yes, so thank you for sitting with us today. Right. And we want to see the execution of the plan. We've been planning for a long time. Yes. It, it's, now it, we want to see the execution. Sure. I mean, the biggest challenge, as you know, is the financing. And this is not unique to Ghana. In fact, I just came back from South Africa, and they were talking about the financing gaps in Africa. Right? If you go to Kenya, 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 and I believe Tanzania, they've recently built like um, 300 kilometers from Nairobi to Mombasa. Right? It was a huge commitment. The government made that effort that this is what you want. It was a loan, and we we are not in a position. You know, most people always complain about why you're taking more loans and debt. Okay. So there has to be some balance right. to, make, we'll, to make this happen. We'll have you yeah. on again so All we right. can talk about uh, what lessons you are learning from the Cantamanto situation, sure. which will guide further development. Because yes. now we know that the possibility that people may, may encroach on the land is almost a given in yes. an urban center yeah. like Accra. The Ghana Railway Development Authority Chief Executive Mr. Yao Owusu has been our guest on the table this morning. Thank you, sir, for making time. Thank you very time. much for having me. And we are talking about real development in Ghana and where we are missing the gaps. Huge infrastructure, and it also requires a heavy investment. So we are not near the target yet, but the closest one is the Takrade, the Tema to Impakadan, one which we are told is 98% complete, suspected to be ready for use in March of 2024. More conversations to expect when we return from the break. It's breakfast on GTV.